As a student, Earl Henry seemingly wished to keep his birds forever, suspending them in time through his skillful use of taxidermy. He joined the Knoxville chapter in 1929. His talents would reveal themselves through his hands and his voice across the state and across the ocean. After undergraduate school, he attended the University of Tennessee College of Dentistry in Memphis in 1933. While there, he became the president of the TOS chapter in Memphis. Within two years, he returned to Knoxville as a dentist. Believing that no patient would want a dentist handling birds, Earl Henry began preserving them on canvas instead. Earl Henry reported for active naval duty at Paris Island Marine Base after his wedding. It was at Paris Island that Earl Henry began seriously painting birds. Known as the bird guy in the Navy, he would often seek out birds on the base. In 1943, he was transferred to the Dental Corps at the U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis, where his painting continued. Earl Henry volunteered for sea duty and was assigned to the heavy cruiser USS Indianapolis on July 25, 1944, a ship committed to the war in the Pacific. Earl Henry continued to paint birds and treat sailors in the dental lab below decks. My father received a choice assignment to uh, the USS Indianapolis. It took him two months to reach the ship, but he finally reached the ship at Saipan on July 25th of 1944. There are two paintings that we know that were done aboard ship, and uh, one of them he did within the first month he was on the ship, and that's of an American bald eagle. It's the only one of the paintings he did that I wouldn't call a nature print, and the term I use is war poster picture. And it's just full of symbolism with the American eagle seeming to protect the 48 star flag in the background and the eagle is clutching a serpent and tied to the tail of the bleeding serpent is a tiny tattered uh, Japanese army flag. It would be politically incorrect for somebody to paint that today, but not if you were in a Navy vessel in the Pacific in August of 1944. But Earl's talents were not limited to painting. Well, the chaplain recruited volunteers to do programs to entertain the men on the ship when they were not in imminent danger of, of an attack. My father volunteered to uh, entertain them with bird calls, and the funny thing about it is that some of the other officers, their reaction was, he'll embarrass the officer corps, but my father went ahead and did it anyway. And there's a book written by the widows of another officer who went down the ship describing that uh, from her husband, she said, uh, it brought the house down. They loved it and they wanted him to, to do more of those. By 1945, Earl Henry Jr. was born while Earl was en route to his ship. He received word and he sent his son a note. He was on board a ship with a secret cargo and a secret mission. After completing its mission, it sailed for Guam. Tragically, Earl Henry died on the ill-fated USS Indianapolis. He was delivering parts of the atomic bomb during, used during the Second World War to end the Second World War, and it was on the way back that it was torpedoed and ultimately sank. Many of the men perished in the water. Sadly, Knoxville and East Tennessee lost a talented ornithologist, a talented artist in his own right, and also uh, a wonderful dentist as well. 
There were 880 men that died in the sinking of the ship, and that's the greatest loss of life from the sinking of any U.S. Navy ship. There were 317 survivors.